Hey everybody. So we now know how to take derivatives of all logarithms and all exponential functions. Hey, what I want to spend the first part of the video today is going back to a rule hey, that we looked really looked at really early on as we were learning how to take derivatives, right? So we had our definition of a derivative, which was the limit as change of x goes to zero, right? And we then looked at the power rule. which is the derivative of x to the n is, okay, what do we do? We bring that n to the front, x to the n minus 1. Now, do you remember how we went about proving that to be true? Okay. Well, what we did <clears throat> is we went back to the definition of a derivative. We said that the derivative of x to the n is the limit as change of x goes to the zero, uh, change of x goes to zero, x plus change of x to the n minus x to the n over change of x. And then this, this x plus change of x to the n, we multiplied it out because we had seen if it was a square, we'd foil it. If it was a cube, we'd follow our uh, cubic expansion rule. Okay, and then we had to do this for the x to the n, and it ended up being what? The combination of n choosing 0, x to the n, change of x to the 0, plus combination of n choosing 1, x to the n minus 1, change of x to the first. Okay, and we wrote that all out. Now, what I told you guys at that time was, you know what, this proof only partially covers the power rule. It only works when n are whole numbers. Because for us to expand out this x plus change of x to the n, we have to only have values of n, such as 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. But we've applied this rule to things like x to the 1 half, x to the 3 halves, x to the four-fifths, okay? And I told you at that time, I said, we've got to come back and prove at some point that this works for any value of n. So that's what I want to do today. So let's, let's write this as y equals x to the n. That's the function that we want to differentiate. I don't want to use the limit as change of x goes to 0 anymore. Now remember, recently we've determined that we know how to take the derivative of logarithms. Here's what I notice. I have an exponent up here. I'm not sure what to do with it. Wouldn't it be nice if there wasn't an exponent at all? If I use properties of logarithms and I take the natural log of both sides, the natural log of y equals the natural log of x to the n, what can I do with that exponent now? I can bring it to the front. Can I take the derivative of what we have right now? Yeah, I can, because we have implicit differentiation. Let's differentiate with respect to x. What's the derivative of the natural log of y with respect to x? Well, implicit differentiation, derivative of the inside, dy dx, times the derivative of the outside at the inside, derivative well, the derivative of the natural log of x would be 1 over x, but it's the natural log of y, so it's 1 over y. Equals. All right, now how do we handle this? n is just a number. Okay, it's a constant multiple. We're taking the natural log of x times some number n, so can't I just leave that n out front? Times, what's the derivative of the natural log of x? With respect to x, it's 1 over x. So we end up with this. Now, our goal is to find 
this dy dx, isn't it? So we can solve for dy dx by multiplying by y on both sides. So I end up with dy dx equals n times y over x. Now you're saying that looks nothing like the power rule. What are we supposed to get from the power rule? We're supposed to get n x to the n minus 1. Oh, my goodness. Whoops. The derivative is n x to the n minus 1. Uh, I can't believe I forgot to write that. Okay, that's what we're supposed to get. And right now we have n times y over x. Do we want y in the derivative? No, we don't. But what do we know about y? y is x to the n. Let's put that in there. This is n times, what's y? x to the n over x. And what do we get when we take x to the n over x? That's n x to the n minus here we did not rely on binomial expansion, where n just had to be whole numbers. This is going to work for any value of n. All right, so that's the first thing I wanted to show you. I now feel much better, and I hope you do too, about using this power rule, because there's been a part of me this whole time where we've used it, and I've been like, ah, we haven't proved this yet, we haven't proved this yet, now we've proved it. All right? All right. Logarithmic differentiation. Let's use that same concept okay, that we used here in taking the natural log of both sides allowed me to use properties of logarithms and bring that exponent to the front. Look at this nasty derivative to take. Okay. I'm taking the derivative of the square root of x squared minus 1 over x squared plus 1. Now what I notice here is I have to use a chain rule, right? The inside is this fraction. The outside is the square root. But when I take the derivative of the inside, I have to use the quotient rule. So I'm doing the chain rule, but the derivative of the inside requires the quotient rule. You can imagine how messy this is going to get. But what if I use my properties of logarithms? Let's take the log, natural log of both sides. You know what? That square root is the same as a one-half power. And if we have an exponent inside a logarithm, what can we do with that? Let's bring that exponent to the front. Now, what else do we have here? Inside this logarithm, we have a quotient. Okay? We can rewrite that as subtraction. I think this is a lot easier derivative to take. We're going to have to take it implicitly because it's not solved for y, but we can handle that. What's the derivative of the natural log of y with respect to x? dy dx times 1 over y equals, let's take the derivative of the right side with respect to x. Let's leave that 1 half out. What's the derivative of the natural log of x squared minus 1? I still have to use the chain rule, but now the derivative of the inside is easy. It's 2x. And what's the derivative of the outside at the inside? 1 over x squared minus 1. Minus. Chain rule again on this side. Derivative of the inside, that's just 2x. Derivative of the outside would be 1 over x, but we've got to put the inside back in there. So the derivative of the outside at the inside is 1 over x squared plus 1. All right, let's clean this up a little bit. I'm going to distribute the 1 half. And I'm just going to put things in the numerator. So we got x over x squared minus 1 minus x over x squared plus 1. Now, are we done? Have we found dy dx? No, we still have a y over there. 
Well, let's multiply by y on both sides. This gives me my dy dx, and it's equal to x over x squared minus 1, oops, minus x over x squared plus 1 times y. Now, do we want a y in the derivative of this function? I don't. Okay. So what can we do? We only want x's. We have a y down there. But what do we know about y? y is that big square root. So let's just write this as the square root of, right, so times y, so times the square root of x squared minus 1 over x squared plus 1. There we go. Yeah, it still work. Um, you could have used the chain rule on this one. Derivative of the inside would involve the quotient rule and then do the derivative of the outside at the inside. But this technique is called logarithmic differentiation because if we take the log of both sides, we can use properties of logarithms to rewrite it to be a much easier derivative step. Going from this step to that step, taking my derivative, was pretty simple. I just needed to finish solving for dy dx by multiplying by y on both sides and then substituting back in. Yeah, a lot of work still to write out, but the differentiation was quite a bit easier. So that's logarithmic differentiation. That's what we're working on today. We've proved that power rule works for any value of n. Now we know this technique of using logarithms um, and their properties can help us differentiate more complicated functions. Thanks for watching. See you later.